What is going on, guys? With just a quick live stream for you. Um, a lot of people have noticed that lately I've been posting more of my catches um, differently. And instead of doing the quick snap, uh, I'm showing you guys exactly kind of what the fish looks like in a different way. And I kind of wanted to go over the gear that I use uh, when I do that. So um, if you guys like the t-shirt, this is a, this is a glass fin uh, t-shirt. Uh, and sorry I'm on such a high stool. I had to get rid of my chair. My chair did not do super well. What is up, my friend B. Coffney? Connie? Sorry, pardon me. Okay, so let's get on to the gear. So, uh, I'll just go over really quickly the gear that I use um, whenever I uh, take my, when I go filming or when I go take photos. I use the same camera for both. I didn't used to, but now I do um, because I just find it easier. Uh, if you're new to the channel or new to the video, give it the video a thumbs up. And uh, this is also extremely affordable stuff, and I'll explain how it can be as affordable as I make it um, as we go through it. Okay, so one thing that most people don't know is that uh, when I film, when I, and this is not just throwing the tripod up, when I film something, which I do commercially for a company sometimes for promos um, that I sell the rights to, I am the only one behind the camera operating the, the rig. But if I'm going to go out and just shoot a YouTube video, um, it's a little different. So uh, I like manual lenses. One, they're a little less expensive, and two, they're, uh, they're easier to work with as you're filming because you don't have to rely on the autofocus, and you're not fiddling with adjusting the, uh, the auto or the manual focus on the camera. So what I've been filming with lately uh, is really inexpensive. It is a Nikon D7100. Uh, uh, you can find these almost brand new but slightly used with, uh, like this one had less than a thousand shutter accutations on it for, and I picked it up for just over 400. Um, I know that sounds like a lot for a camera, but uh, when you see the stills and things I'm able to get from it, you can understand why. I also then have a portrait or a battery grip. Um, and then uh, what that does is it houses extra batteries, um, but it also, whenever I take portraits and I do portrait sessions, um, it allows me to comfortably take shots this way. Um, this is a plate for my fluid head. It's really inexpensive. So altogether, the battery pack was anywhere from $20 to $50, $60, depending on uh, which third party you go through. But if you buy the Nikon one, you're looking at a couple hundred. Okay, and that's just the body. This right here is a trigger that I use for off-camera flash, um, but I usually don't take that out with me. But if I'm going to use any flash for products like t-shirts or something like that that I wanted to get shots of, um, this is about $20. On to the lenses, which in reality, lenses, especially uh, when you're looking at shooting for social media, whenever you're, you're viewing the stuff on a, on a phone or on a tablet usually, um, you don't really necessarily need tons of resolution. Like, for example, this, I used to shoot in a 12.5 megapixel D90, and on a cell phone, it's really hard to tell the difference sometimes between that and this, which shoots 24.5 megapixels. And many people think that, oh, wow, my phone has almost 20 megapixels. Well, there's definitely a difference in sensor size, which means that this gathers more light, and it also gets in more information. I don't want to go too dense on you guys, but there's a reason why I shoot with the camera and not with my cell phone. Okay? Um, and one of those reasons is interchangeable lenses. These are not all the lenses I have, but these are the ones I take with me typically. Okay? So first, I have a 24 millimeter. This is an f2.8 uh, um, manual focus lens. Now, you might ask, why do you choose manual focus? Well, if I want, <clears throat> if I want wide shots of video, this allows me to smoothly change focus, meaning racking focus back and forth and doing some fun things. And some of my newer videos on YouTube actually showed that capability. Um, this is a 50 millimeter f1.8, and what that means is that it allows me to thoroughly blur out the background. And 2.8 is also, it's slightly allows slightly less light in. This right here is quintessentially one of the greater portrait lenses. Um, especially on what this is called a crop sensor camera. Then I have 
the first zoom of the group. This is a um, an 1855. Um, it does the job. This is actually on the camera a lot um, when I'm looking for photos specifically uh, because you can shoot fairly wide at 18, which on this camera ends up being not quite 18. It's what 24 or something like that. Um, and then at 55, which is a little, which, you know, is a little more narrow than this. The next lens I have on me is a uh, again another zoom. This is a 28 to hunt to 100, but realistically, it's closer to 35 to 100. Um, and then from there, another manual lens, which is a 135, and that's for fairly tight shots. Now, what does all this mean? Well, essentially, if I want to get really wide shots. What that lets me do is when I get closer to the fish, if I can, if I can shoot closer to the fish, I can gather more detail typically, and without getting a macro shot, I can do that on this lens fairly wide. I can do that on this lens fairly wide, and typically on this lens fairly wide. And what that'll do is that'll elongate and bump the the focus of right on the fish. This lens is great if I want to take a shot with, same thing with this one and this one, when if I want to take a shot of an angler with a fish, or if I want to take a shot of just, you know, the scene or whatever. Um, but the, the more, you know, the higher the millimeter of the focal length there, um, the, the, you know, the more narrow the shot gets. But that also means that it it does a really good job compressing the image, which means that like uh, you know it really throws off, and it's more flatter. It throws it's more flattering to the person, but it also throws off and compresses the imp, the the background more so. And it'll usually if you know I, one of the questions I got was best one for the beginner. Uh, most DSLRs will come with a lens that's your kit lens. This is actually a kit lens, believe it or not. I do have an upgrade for it, but I don't bring it in the field because my upgrade's too expensive. I use it only for portraits. It's a Tamron um, lens, zoom lens. But this one, the whenever I convert the the this live stream into a video, the image that is the thumbnail, which is that latest brown trout, was taken on this lens. If you have a kit lens that is what, 18 to 55 or a uh, 28 to 100. No, I'm trying, I'm sorry. Um, those will work just fine. Your next step up, which these lenses are pretty, usually come with a camera if you buy the camera new, or if you buy it as a kit on eBay or something. Or I would check out keh.com or adorama.com. Those are both used and new sites. Personally, if you're going to shoot video, you might want to look into a lens like this which is a 24 millimeter um, f2.8 this was fifteen dollars it's an old vintage lens which means it doesn't autofocus and you change the aperture or how blurry how much light it lets in for layman's terms there's it's definitely not that simple but it is um, manually but that lets you learn the camera pretty well same thing this manual lens right here which is one of my favorite lenses I owned was seven dollars or Seventeen dollars. I'm sorry, um, but it takes fantastic portraits. It's very sharp. It's very heavy, but it's very sharp. If I were to say your next upgrade from getting after you have your kit lens, which learn to shoot on a kit lens, no problem. It'll be hands down still better than your iPhone or Android phone. The next lens I would get for just shooting around and having a good time is a, a 50 mil f 1.8 or f2 or f1.4 this one right here cost me fifty dollars used it's fifty dollars used um, there's a newer version which is the was called the the, uh, the G which is more but even used it's about a hundred dollars um, so the starter I would say use your kit lenses uh, you might want to invest in for example for me if I'm shooting fish frequently um, and it's not su if it's super bright, I will use a polarizing filter, a circular polarizing filter. And what that does essentially is, you see how it's kicking that light back at you? What that does is it cuts down on the glare of the water, and sometimes the, the glare on the, off the fish because the water's on the fish. 
Um, and so what that'll do is it'll bring forth more detail as well as cut down on the glare from the water surrounding the fish sometimes. And so, I, you know, that's just the gear I use. I try and keep it very simple and very cheap. I also am kind of weird and enjoy manually focusing sometimes because it really brings you back to what it is you're doing. That I also shoot everything on manual mode. Um, and sometimes that means that when you're shooting, okay, you're shooting, 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 um, and then you have to what's called chimp, which means that you, you check the photo every time you take a picture. That's okay. When you're learning, that's fine. Um, now, let's get down to actually what makes a good photo of a fish. I'm from this, the, the camp to where I think that anything I shoot, I want to shoot in a natural set. Meaning that if I'm shooting somebody, a portrait of somebody, or I'm doing a senior picture for somebody, um, I find out what their interests are, or what they like to do, or you know other things. That I'll figure out a way to get them in that setting to show them naturally. And that's the same for fish and wildlife. So... If I want to shoot a picture of, of a fish, I want it to I want the people to know that it's been caught. I'm sorry about my phone going off, but um, one of the social media sites I help run is receiving crazy number of, of messages right now. But if I want to show a fish be that was just caught, if I'm actually able to use my camera to take a picture of it rather than just relying on the tripod and video, I will ask... My gosh, this person... I'm sorry. Um, but... You know, I like when the fish is either in the water or just pulled up from the water, still dripping wet. Um, trying to put that animal in its natural state, um, as well as keep the animal healthy and, and, and happy as well. So, um, you know, there's f shots of the fish still in the water, just being pulled out of the water for a half second or two. Or even, um, we've, we've experimented with underwater shots, not with this, but with others, and I just... Personally, I, I really enjoy the imagery. Also, your lighting. If it's super harsh light, try and either row over, boat over, or walk over to an area where it's a slightly shadier um, or with dappled light. Because if you have dappled light, meaning that little spots of light are hitting all around, and you get the fish in the shade or the fish in some nicely uh, diffused light, the background, if you use a lens like this, or a lens like this, a little wider open, and either one f1.8, 2, 28, okay, or 4, you're going to get a nice blurry, what's called bokeh in the background. It's going to be pretty, it's going to be spherical, and the colors are going to look good. Um, and then also, if you buy ND filters, um, when you're shooting the actual landscape of the water itself, if you buy an ND filter, which basically is a filter that cuts down on the light that comes in, and you might think, well, why would I do that? Well, if you want to shoot, have you ever seen those shots of silky water and things um, coming off of a waterfall? Well, if you do that and up the and, and slow down your shutter speed, that will uh, typically blur or silkify the water that you're shooting. But if you're shooting a fish, I like to shoot a faster shutter speed, especially if that water droplet's coming off of its mouth or something. That's so cool. And I also like to angle the fish, not for a hero shot, because to me... The image is about the fish, not about the angler. So I like to try different angles to try and show the different textures on the fish, on the underside, on the pectoral fin, on the, the um, dorsal fin, on uh, the gill plating, um, or even sometimes in the mouth. Like if you see a really awesome uh, kipe from on like a like a male, you know, like a bull, then then get that texture. Images speak so much better when you have texture. And uh, I know I haven't talked much about photos and stuff on the channel because it's, most people care about YouTube videos, but I see so many, so many shots of fish and of mm -hmm. anglers that could be so much better if just you moved 10 feet to the right or 10 feet to the left. Beware of your background. You know, like a lot of, I know, I know it's easier to just do a selfie like this, but, or, or, and I see a lot of guys putting fish on the ground. I don't like to do that. Instead, I, you know, well, that's one reason why I actually fish typically, I, I very seldomly fish solo, but when I do, um, <clears throat> not only do I think, where am I going to land this fish, but I also think, where am I going to photograph this fish? <clears throat> if I'm out in the middle of this this pond or this lake that is completely shot from light, 
I might think to myself, okay, maybe I have to create shadow with my body, and then I can I can shoot the fish like this as its mouth is in the water, okay? Because I can bring up shadows easier than I can cut down on nasty harsh uh, light. So just some things to consider. I'm not going to go into like a photography lesson because I am not qualified to do that realistically. I mean, even I even sometimes skimp out on. When I'm, when I'm doing videos for you guys, like I have a, a reflector, a bounce light right here. I have a softbox right here, but I'm still running those gross tungsten lights above me. Um, and so I just I want to get this information to you. But uh, if you guys have any questions, please, uh, you know, make sure you give the video a thumbs up first. But put them in the comments below. I don't have much time to talk to you guys right now about some stuff, but I'm going to be discussing some of the stuff more so, you know, especially vlog style when we do some other videos and stuff moving forward and we're out and about with fish because it's, I mean, it's easier just to say like you know here's the image and this is what I shot it at um, but on my social media if you guys were to ever uh, check out my social media you can always uh, I usually freely give that information because um, only some of my images of fish and things are sold so for the most part it's free free public information that I'm more than willing to dish out so Again, hopefully you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Check out the other videos in the playlist. Uh, if you have any comments, questions below, please, please, please leave them, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And until next time, guys, catch you guys on the flip side. Tight lines. We are out.